Saints, He's redeemed us, bought us back with His blood. He's made us alive when we were dead. He's, he's reconciled us and stopped us from being enemies and made us friends. God is not fighting with you. He is not looking to destroy your life. The Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them, He said. That's the truth. Can you imagine? What, what if someone really began to take on board just these three things? Like, God redeemed me. I'm His. I belong to Him. He's made me alive. I was dead. And that life that He's given me, I can never die. It's eternal in nature. What if they took on board? Like, I'm, I'm one who's reconciled. I'm a friend of God. And He's my friend. How do you think that that would change in their evangelism? Just their walk. Could you imagine waking up in the morning knowing, you know, God, I belong to you. I'm your responsibility. I don't have to worry about today. I can actually look to you for all my, my necessities. I can trust you. You're going to bring me to be with you for all eternity. You've given me eternal life and no one can take it from me. Lord, I'm no longer an enemy. You've said, I'm your friend. Oh, God. Could you imagine that? We would just overwhelm. Like, oh, God, that is just so awesome that you've done that. That's just three. I need to speed things up, though. Reconciliation. There's another one. I'm sure you've heard this term. It's, it's used. It is a very important term. It's called justification. Justification from guilt to acquittal. How many of you guys have ever heard the term uh, justification means just as if I've never sinned? Okay, a couple of you. Now, bless you. I don't think that that's absolutely clear and completely correct. Because I'd wonder, is God playing some magic trick with us? Is God playing some magic trick? I mean, who, you know you've sinned, right? Does God know you've sinned? Does the devil know you've sinned? Then how are we pretending that I've never sinned? Okay? And your conscience can't handle that. Your conscience can't handle that. We've got a problem. See, something that, that when it comes to it, justification expresses God's judicial action, okay? That apart from human merit, according, uh, according to which the guilty are pardoned, acquitted, reinstated as God's children, fellow heirs with Jesus Christ. Now, like, what did that mean? Well, it means this, that God declares someone accepted in His sight and His word is final. Nobody can argue. And if He says, I pardoned you, you're pardoned. If He says, I accept you, you're accepted. If he says you're free to go, there is therefore now no condemnation. What God says is final. Now, the way he could do that is because of the cross. Now, let's just say, um, oh, I don't know. Um, let's see, um, Alan here, right? You, let's say you owe me 20 pounds. Okay, Alan owes me 20 pounds. And um, uh, we're walking up the street, and Alan says, I'll pay you next week, Pastor, no problem. We're walking up the street, and Alan sees me coming, and he reaches in his pocket and says, oh, I don't have it. Oh, what, what am I going to do? Uh, I'll go tell Pastor I don't have it. Okay, but I'm sorry, I don't have the 20 quid. I'll pay you next week. And, oh, okay, no, no problem. All right, Alan, okay, you pay me next week. And uh, walking up the street next week, and there's Alan, and he sees me coming up the street. What's he doing? <gasps> Oh, I ain't got it again, man. I don't know. I, I can't pay this, man. I owe him 20 quid. It's real. I really owe him the 20 quid. I can't pay it. And so um, the second time, the third time, how many times do you think it's going to take before, like, there's an alley? I think I'm going to take the alley so I can just avoid this. And the relationship is torn apart, isn't it? Because of a debt that's owed. Now, let's say after a while, I recognize, I haven't seen Alan around for a while. Oh, I, I, he still owes me that 20 quid. Hey, Al, I forgive you the debt, man. Just don't worry about it. Okay, I forgive you. Okay, wipe it off. It's no problem. Hey, let's go out for Starbucks. But let's say here, we got James right here, right? James, let's say he's, he's, well, he's a student. He's got lots of money, so it's not a problem. And, uh, and so <laughs> as he comes and says, listen, I'll pay it for him, Pastor. So James gives me the 20 quid that Alan owes me. Now, what happens? Could I mention to Alan, hey, remember, remember that day you owe me 20 quid? What would he say? It's paid. It's a big deal. It's covered. It's not a problem. I'm free. The payment's made. I can say, but yeah, I remember that. Maybe I could even talk to him. And you know, it's really not good to borrow money from people. And you know, all, all the kinds of things. You could even teach him a lesson using it as an example without actually condemning him. 
because the debt's been paid. Now watch this, please. Pay very close attention. Please look up here for a second. When it comes to it, the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. That Christ came to make the payment. Now recognize the Father and the Son are what? One. So it's not like He owes Him now. It's all been taken care of so that the relationship of reconciliation can take place. That so that when God declares us righteous in His sight because of what Christ has done, He's not playing some magic trick game, sort of like putting a little hanky over you and saying, oh, I'm just going to pretend that you're righteous. No, Christ made the payment so that we could be released from the guilt. So that we could genuinely be made free. Saints, see, when it comes to it, when we belong to Christ, when the Bible talks about us being made righteous or declared righteous in His sight, that God is the one who is just and the justifier of those who have faith in Jesus Christ. See, when it comes to heaven, there's two things that we need. We need forgiveness and we need righteousness. See, um, when I was young, we used to have these uh, like stereos that had like this little, uh, a little needle thing in there. It would bounce back and forth like this and negative 10 on one side and like zero in the middle, positive 10. Anybody else remember those? Or am I really dating myself here? Some of the older are like, hell, I remember that. Very, okay, but what, think about it for a second. Now, we're born into this world at negative 10. We owe a debt we can't pay. We inherited it from Adam, and we did it by choice, and we're like a negative 10, right? So what do we need? We need forgiveness. So Christ comes and dies upon the cross. God lays our sin on Him. Now, where does that take us? Zero. Well, that's not righteous. That's just zero. Now, that's the problem because some people think that now, now you've got to earn acceptance before God. Some religious systems like um, that, that, that are very into like doing good works for the purpose of like getting God to accept you and making sure your eternity is secure and those kinds of things. What, what they're missing is that this is what God did. When we trusted in Christ, God justified us. In other words, He took, took the, 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 the needle and He pinned it at positive 10. He pinned it at positive. See, what it is is that through faith in Christ, we are justified. We are justified through faith in Christ Jesus. Um, God takes all of the good stuff Jesus did, all of His righteous acts, gathered it all together, as it were, and then He says, here, I'll clothe you in what Christ has done, all of His obedience. So He forgives us through the cross, and through faith, and faith alone, we're justified. And the needle is pinned at positive 10. And you know something? He smashes it. That, that needle's never moving. That needle's never moving. We're His. Because of His work. And all we do is trust in Him through faith. He pins it at positive 10. In Romans in chapter 4, verses 6 to 8, Paul quotes David from Psalm 32. And I remember as I was a new believer, this was something that really gripped my soul. In verses 7 and 8 of Romans chapter 4, excuse me, of chapter 4, we find that the Apostle Paul quotes this passage. In the NIV, it says it this way Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Listen to this second verse. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will never count against him. Could you imagine that? What if God says, I will never count your sin against you ever? Wow. I'm free.